What are the books about? Are they about how how to live a healthier, you know, about your health and food and the, nutrition? And Yes. And okay. The You series is all about health and wellness. And mm-hmm. um, the first book, You, the Owner's Manual, was just a way of getting people comfortable with their bodies, not to not see them as such mysterious entities to Mm -hmm. be able to um, diagnose themselves, to understand how they function, to take control of themselves, their their health. Mm -hmm. So they weren't just a, my my husband's metaphor is that, you know, you don't want to be the ball in a game. You want to be a player. You're supposed to be a a team member with your physician or nurse or chiropractor, whoever you're dealing with. You need to be an active participant in making the choices and understanding what's going on uh, and being comfortable making a sec, getting a second opinion. So it's mm-hmm. really about empowering people to take control of their health. And then we, from that one, we had you on a diet, and then you a smart patient, and you living longer, which is an anti-aging book, and you being beautiful. So it was just a whole series mm-hmm. of books about letting people become empowered in their own wellness. Well, the response to those books were, were incredibly positive. As I mentioned before, people were drawn to um, the tools that were in the manual. Can you tell us a little bit about Health Corps? Health Corps is a foundation that my husband and I started about seven years ago, and it is a peer-to-peer mentoring program where we put recent college grads into schools because most teenagers don't want to listen to a bunch of old people tell them what to do. (laughs) So we put like 22-year-olds in schools. We're in 50 schools now, 13 states. Wow. And um, they teach about nutrition. You know, a lot of these kids don't even know how to read a food label. Mm -hmm. Uh, We teach them how to move. So we give them pedometers. We set up competitions in the school. And then we, most importantly, we give them uh, tips on mental resilience so that they have ways to deal with stress other than eating, smoking, having sex. So we teach them yoga. We teach them meditation. We teach them journaling. We teach them art therapy. We give them a whole slew of tools to deal with the stressors in their lives. Oh, that's beautiful. Is is there a way that we can become involved with that? Can we contribute? Healthcorp.org. Healthcorp. Okay. Yes. C-O-R-P-S, like the Peace Corps. Okay, healthcorps.org. Okay. Yeah. That's a, an amazing project to, to uh, you know, pay it forward for our children because you're absolutely right. The stresses that they deal with uh, are incomparable to, to what we grew up with. I mean, it's just not the same world, and it's it's really a blessing that, that you have a program in place for them. Uh, See, what I love most about it is that these kids become little viral vectors for wellness. So they <laughs> take the information and they go back to their families and they mm-hmm. say to their moms, get this junk out of our house. They go down to the local bodegas and say, I want fresh fruits and vegetables. If you bring them in, we'll buy them. They change their communities because they're passionate and they're young and they have the energy. Healthcorps.org. Um, get involved. See what else you can do to turn your children on to, um, to this project as well. Do you think that the state of the world has a lot to do with why people are so receptive to what you're writing about? It seems like an awakening. People are concerned about their health, their wellness. Yeah, I, I think we live in the matrix anyway. I really do. I, think. <laughs> I love that. I love that <laughs> movie series. I think there's some truth to it. Yeah. You know, and we're and then and there is a system that wants to keep us asleep to be consumers. And and you know, it's not like they're sucking real energy out of us in those pods, but they are sucking virtual energy out of us in terms of mm-hmm. making us consumers. So the energy is represented by the money, but. Um, I find that as a society, the more that we fixate on something, the less that we actually live it. So, you know, we have this obsession with health, and yet two-thirds of us are obese, you know, or oh, significantly overweight or obese. Um, we love food shows, but no one cooks anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, we watch sex consume sex like crazy on the internet and yet fewer and fewer of us are have actually having sex. Teenage boys now they did a study where more teenage boys would rather watch porn than make out with their girlfriends mm-hmm. um, and you know Mehmet talks about on his show this idea of a sexual famine especially in middle aged women where they're not um, having the sex that is making them satisfied and yet we are consuming sex all the time so it's very strange mm-hmm. that um, we have this artificial consumption 
of things that we're losing in our real lives. I don't know what that means, but it scares me a little bit. Well, I, but e even as though, even as that is happening, the opposite is also happening in the sense that there are still, there's still, I believe, an awakening that's happening that people are realizing, yes, this is what I'm doing. I am um, in cyberspace way too much. I, you know, I'd rather tweet in Facebook rather than pick up the phone or write a letter or call you and come see you. You know, people are starting to realize that the connections have been uh, a little impaired or maybe not a little, maybe more <laughs> than, yeah. than we need. And um, I, I think that's the value in, in um, the books that you write, the messages that messages that you teach to keep us inspired and connected to what's important uh, in our existence. And uh, I just can't. I, I love Lisa. <laughs> Listen, Lisa, we have to take a break. Uh, but when we come back, I really want to dig into um, another one of your New York Times bestsellers um, that speaks about us um, and relationships um, and maybe even share some of the principles with the Satin Lounge to help us, you know, reconnect to why we um, why we are who we are, because we have to start with our self-examination first before we can actually make those positive connections with other people. You going to stay around, stick around with me for a little longer? Would you do that? Absolutely. <laughs> Awesome. Um, we're going to come back and talk more about this amazing book that is a bestseller and uh, speak of relationships. And in this book, Lisa, about connections and relationships, we are talking about same-sex couples, too. We'll have more with Lisa Oz coming up. You're listening to The Satin Lounge with Kia Renee. Don't move. My fingers touch. 